Today, doctors can pinpoint tiny lesions using 3D reconstructions of the human body, and robots can communicate with people and one another. These pioneering technologies were made possible in part by the work of one visionary computer engineer. Ruzhna Baichi was born in 1933 in Slovakia to Jewish parents whose lives were tragically cut short during World War II. My life has been quite influenced by them, although they were killed when I was 11 years old. My father was an engineer, and my mother believed in woman equality, and she said to me always, you hold your own. After the war, Baichi took advantage of Slovakia's free educational system. She earned master's and PhD degrees and worked on early electronic technology. I was, I believe, the first PhD in Slovakia in electrical engineering. Um, so I think that helped for me to get the opportunity to come to America. Once in the States, Baichi earned yet another PhD, this one in computer science from Stanford University. Then in 1972, she joined the faculty at the University of Pennsylvania. When I arrived, I was the only woman in the whole College of Engineering. And I believe that the only way I can compete will be that I do something different. So I started basically a new discipline called active perception. Baichi was the first to point out that robots should control their own sensors, move their own cameras, and be able to reach out to touch things on their own. It didn't take long before she figured out that it was time uh, to separate uh, computer science from engineering because they were doing different things. And uh, before you know it, she was chairman of the department and doing a fantastic job. By the 1990s, Baichi's Laboratory for General Robotics and Active Sensory Perception, the GRASP Lab, had become a major force in developing cutting-edge robotics and computer vision. She was always trying to find and implement technologies in new, unexpected places. She's able to bring people together, even maybe with slightly different views, because she can seize from both of them what they have in common. For example, I just happened to be in a meeting where they showed some x-ray images of the brain. We knew that there was a tumor, but we didn't know where exactly it was. Baichi thought technology could help. So over the next six months, she built the first 3D atlas of the human brain. This single contribution would allow surgeons and radiologists to treat tumors with pinpoint accuracy and in turn save millions of lives. After 20 years at the GRASP lab, Baichi went to work for the National Science Foundation for three years and then joined UC Berkeley in 2001. There, her team creates information technologies for social, environmental, and healthcare problems. One promising new technology she developed is teleimmersion. If you put a lot of cameras around in a room, you can image people and um, you can connect them through the internet with other people. I picked up on that idea and designed and worked out what you see here. You learn faster if you have a complete three-dimensional view Dancers have known this for a long time because in dance studios, you have mirrors all around. A lot of uh, labs are just oriented towards making some applications or towards researching some database. And, and we actually do this combination of art and uh, technology, and I think that's very, very interesting. And Baichi's career has been about just that, the artful application of technology. My goal in my life has been to make technology useful. If we understand each other and respect each other, 
and this technology can help to them, then I think I have done my job. The 2009 Benjamin Franklin Medal in Computer and Cognitive Science is presented to Rujna Baichi for contributions to robotics and computer vision, specifically the development of active perception and the creation of methods to improve our understanding of medical imaging.